What's up, YouTube? Eugene here. Hope you're well. So I attended a religious function today, and I was invited to this event. And for the whole time, I was kind of asleep. I don't mean physically. I mean consciously. I was not present in, in the moment. I wasn't aware. I was just kind of lost in my own. I was distracted with my own thoughts. So it was an hour drive there, an hour long event, and another hour drive home. And, you know, the whole time I was just really distracted with my thoughts. And once the event started, I was just kind of, you know, thinking. And all of a sudden I got this punch in the face and I could realize my brother-in-law was attendance because I can smell his aqua de Gio <laughs> from 10 pews away. And if he calls me Eugenius one more time, I might have that bottle of aqua de Gio disappear. But once mass had started and the, the sermon had begun, that's when I really became distracted. And I was just kind of watching my thoughts wander from place to place to place. And it was like, did I get enough work done today? To what am I going to do when I get home? To I have Saturday off. I should do something. And then they really got serious. And it was like, what are the greatest sheepers of all time? That's what I was thinking. Almost like comparing French sporting franchises or greatest basketball players of all time. I was thinking, what are the greatest sheepers ever? And I kind of went from house to house. And then I stopped at the house of Chanel, one with a very long history, rich in tradition and heritage. And I thought, what are the great sheepers from Chanel? And Anteus came to mind. Cristal came to mind. And then 31 Rue Cambone came to mind. And I stopped there. And it's not because I thought 31 Rue Cambone was one of the greatest sheepers of all time, but it's because Chanel has them classified as a sheepra. And I wore this a few days back and not once during my wearing did the sheepra genre ever once pop into my head there were times where I, I pictured golden ambers as a color. And even though there's quite a bit of amber in here, I, I wouldn't consider this an oriental either. Um, if you're familiar with the sheeper structure, you'll know it's one of the classic perfume genres. And it's one that consists of uh, the pyramid would consist of bergamot, patchouli, oak moss. Sometimes they have labdamum lab in there. Sometimes they'll add vetiver. So it'll give you a nice sparkling contrast of, of uh, freshness, of the, the textured patchouli and the cold, dry oak moss. So it's all about the contrast really for me. And while, whilst wearing 31 Rue Cambone, not once did I ever say, oh, that's a beautiful oak moss because there just isn't any oak moss in 31 Rue Cambone. At least none that I pick up and it's not even listed in the note pyramid. Not only did I have trouble picking up the oak moss, even the patchouli as I was, you know, kind of scanning the notes, patchouli was even... It was hardly even worth mentioning the patchouli in here because it's not that that dry, textured, abrasive, um, rugged patchouli. If there's any patchouli in here, it's it's hardly even worth mentioning. It's just it's it's a very minimalist um, patchouli. It's almost like they have extracted all the good stuff, all the good sentiments have been pulled out of here, and and. and and Chanel's really handled patchouli, you know, really good with a lot of their other um, perfumes. But in here, 
you know, it, it's barely even detectable. It's, it's, if, if, if there's any patchouli in here, it just kind of adds this, this dryness, which patchouli is known for. So you're missing like one and a half key elements in this perfume to consider it a Shebra. You're missing, you're fully missing the oak moss and you're missing half of a patchouli. I would consider this half of a patchouli note. I wouldn't give you a full note for patchouli just because all the good stuff's missing. Um, there's not enough in here to consider an oriental. So to me, whilst wearing this, I figured the best genre that I would categorize this under would be a woody floral musk. Uh, quite musky, lots of florals and lots of woods. Uh, it's it's quite obvious that Jacques Polge is very familiar with uh, Chanel's rich history, and and he's taken that into account while creating this. And I do see a lot of inspiration from Bois de Zille and also from Number Twenty Two. As the opening has got, it's very aldehydic and um, a very creamy sandalwood in the dry down in the base. I get a lot of that creaminess. But I do get the bergamot, the bergamot part that opens up. That's, you know, it's supposed to be there to create a, uh, a sheep brush. So it's got a really nice, bright, sparkling bergamot mixed with a black pepper. The pepper adds a really, really nice, nice touch to this, a nice spicy element. But the heart of this is, is all florals to me. And it's jasmine and iris. And the, the, the exclusives are... It's all about Iris. Like the whole uh, Liz Exclusives is a study on Iris. And there's no doubt about the Iris in here. It's a very warm, dry, slightly powdery Iris. It's very bready and, and earthy. It almost reminds me of like fresh home-cooked bread. Um, earthy in that I've always thought of it as mushroomy like pungent or fungal and if I had a toothpick I can almost like like stab at it and 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 feel it kind of like break through and pop pop into this this mushroom fungalness like not fungal like in a dirty way but it does have a little bit of pungency to it which is probably I don't know the rooty maybe coming from the root but I, I'm not getting much greenness from this iris, but it's it's a very typical Chanel iris. Um, one that I also kind of find in Coco Noir, very similar to this. The Coco Noir iris is also very, uh, I find it fungal and, and mushroomy and bready and yeasty. Uh, the jasmine in here is quite, um, quite indolic. It's a very cold jasmine. And it's musky and I don't want to say it's a full on stanky jasmine. Jasmine is known it can be if it's that night blooming jasmine can get quite, you know, animalic. And this, it, it, it seems like it just kind of hovers at that. It, it goes there and then it pulls, it, it comes to that line of stankiness. And then it, it, it just, you know, it toes that line and it comes back. It never really goes, you know, full-on B.O. or or stank or I don't know at least not to me but I did get a comment about that and, and I'll mention it in a bit but and there's something else in here that reminds me of 22 it's got to be the aldehydic sandalwood very woody in the dry down, but I, I I struggle with that patchouli. You know, I love patchouli. I love Chanel's, the way they handle patchouli, but I struggle picking up much patchouli in here. Um, you know, quality and craftsmanship is superb, you know, second to none with these exclusives. And when I first discovered this, this is an Eau de Toilette concentration bottle. I, I, I probably have this for, I'm going to guess seven years now. And I, I thought about picking up the EDP, the, the Parfum, and uh, 31 Rue Cambon and, and Gardenia are the only two that I currently don't have in 200 mil bottle sizes. And it's not for any reason other than 
it just is. And uh, I'm thinking of picking this up in the um, 200 mil EDP, but I was saying like when I first, I remember first looking into these and there wasn't a whole lot of information online. There wasn't a whole lot of reviews on YouTube for these exclusives. I don't think there was any really when I started searching because they were just, they were really all that exclusive. They were so hard to come by, um, almost impossible to find, you know, not unlike today. Today, they're at the time, there was only one place in Toronto that carried these exclusives. Now there's there's got to be four or five different avenues where I can find these. And some are as close as 15 minutes away. So they are getting a little bit easier to find. They aren't as exclusive as before. And they've even come out with a, a sub-exclusive set with the Lizzo. But yeah, it was really hard to find these. And when I was searching for them, there was very little information. You know, uh, base notes had maybe a couple of threads here and there. And it was mostly like, uh, these are for women. They're, they're way too feminine. A guy can't pull these off. And if it wasn't talking about the the gender it was like oh they don't last they're they're so weak and lightweight and transparent and they're not worth the money but <laughs> I mean for me they're none of that they're totally unisex and they're totally not weak and um not long lasting at all like you know I can smell this forever and then some but I did get a a very snarky comment once while wearing this and I was going on a a work trip with a coworker, and he was driving. We were driving in his car. We were going out of town, and I was wearing this that day. It must have been an early spring morning, and but it was it's quite chilly out still. It wasn't warm. It was still quite cold, and I had this on, and he kept rolling my window down, the passenger window. And after a few minutes, I started to get, I started to feel cold, so I would roll the window up and we started to play this game. He would roll it down. I would roll it up. And uh, after a while, I was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, it's cold. Why are you rolling the window down? And he's like, I got to be honest with you, man. Your perfume smells horrible. It's it's rancid and raunchy and I can't stand it. I feel like I'm going to vomit. And that's why I keep rolling the window up. And I was, I was shocked. I thought it was like the most beautiful thing ever created. It's all funny how we can perceive perfumes differently. But I ask him to, you know, to clarify, to help me understand what it is about this perfume that he doesn't like. And the way he described it, I'm thinking it's coming from that jasmine. Because he took his finger, two fingers like this, and he started to rub them inside of his armpit like this, like just vigorously. He's like rubbing them like this. And then he put them in my nose. He's like, here, smell this. This is exactly what your perfume <laughs> smells like. <laughs> I was like whoa okay <laughs> it was pretty awkward but funny at the same I mean I appreciated you know the way he could transcribe what he was smelling but in the end it was funny because we were good friends and I wasn't offended at all you know it's it's perfume we all perceive it differently that's just my little tale on 31 Rue Camo anyway I love it nonetheless doesn't matter you know what he or anyone else thinks, or if they think it's too girly or not. I can see it being girly because of that jasmine, but doesn't stop me from wearing it. Anyway, 31 Rue Cambon, let me know what you think of this. If you've worn it, if you're familiar with it, if you've tried it, what you think of the exclusives or anything else you want to comment. Do enjoy reading your comments and and stuff like that. Oh, but anyway, let me share with you my scent of the day for this religious event, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go with Dawn, something barnyardy, animalic, dirty, and if there's any sinners, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll keep them at, away from me at an arm's length, at least, if, you know, the repenters, just with that bad energy, stay away, I don't want any part of it, anyway, thanks for watching, we'll see you all again soon.